my last video, we flow tested this carburetor and made some simple modifications to increase airflow. Many of you asked to see my flow bench. In this video, I'll give you a tour and show you how it works. If you missed my last video, click on somewheres up here and you can see my video on flow testing the carburetor. With this bench, you can flow many things. The carburetor that you've already seen, of course, this is a Mopar cylinder head that's my test mule that I've tried and modified many different things on. And of course, my homemade flow bench stand. And what I've been working on all winter long is this air box. If you saw my video of Bonneville salt flats and the, the streamliner that has two snow machine engines that powers it. If you haven't seen that, you can go look for that too. But these are the air boxes off of it. We cut it open and put a piece of glass in here so that I can use my flow bench to figure out how to make it flow better. And as you can see, I have some modifications going on right now. My goal for this winter to figure out how to make this thing flow equally out of each hole. But that's neither here nor there. What we're here to talk about today is this flow bench. Now, if you, like, in, like I've said before, and you know that I'm a tightwad, I'm always trying to find a way to use my hands to accomplish something before I pull my wallet out and pay the big cash for something. And this flow bench isn't any different. When, uh, if you, you go on eBay and find you a used flow bench, somewhere between three and five, six, maybe $8,000, but it's used and you don't know what's wrong with it. Um, so you don't know what you're getting. And of course you can buy a brand new one for $15,000 plus. Uh, obviously none of that stuff fits in my wallet. Just the thought of it would make my wallet turn to dust. <laughs> but I found a place when I was searching on the internet and searching flow benches and realizing just how expensive they were and stuff. And I'll give you a link to it at the end. But this guy Bruce has a set of plans and it costs you 50 bucks for the plans and it, you can build this whole thing for 50 bucks. Now I know you're saying, yeah, right, sure. And you're right. It, it costs a lot more than 50 bucks, but the plans to make it look like you're looking at it right now is 50 bucks and four sheets of, of, uh, I want to say plywood, but that's not the right word. Um, I can't think of it right now. I'll put it over my head, but anyways, with them five sheets of four by eight sheets, three quarter inches thick, you can build this flow bench. It has all instructions on how to cut every single piece, how to fit every single thing together, how to glue everything together. And there's a form that goes with that site. So any problems you have, any questions you have, you can get on the form, get answers. Um, Bruce, who's the owner, is an awesome guy. He's also the one that you can, well, you can't see because I didn't turn it on. Let's do that. He also has the electronic um, flow equipment so that I can use this and set my depression, whatever you want it, 10, 20, 28, whatever. Set the depression, show you how much CFM you're flowing. If you saw the other video, you've seen how that all worked. I have two switches. I got an I and an E. This is intake and this is exhaust. That are on exhaust right now, which means that the air comes up and through here and out instead of pulling air in. So I, I would have these on the intake when I'm testing an intake port because the air is being pulled up through here. 
And that's the way you normally should do the carburetor, but I just made a simple thing to travel this, so I turned it on the exhaust and pulled air down through it instead of sucking air down through it. And we'll do another video on that and compare the difference between sucking it down and blowing it down. I've got a guy building me an adapter so that I can turn this thing right side up and test it. And we'll compare the differences. But I'm getting off track. Now what am I saying? Okay, so I can either make it blow air out or I can make it suck air in. Um, there's a plate down in here that I have to pull out, turn around and shove back in when I switch it from intake to exhaust. One way is for intake, one way is for exhaust. And all the electronics are inside here. And these are all Bruce's electronics. This is a 220 volt uh, flow bench. You can get 110, you can get a 220. The plans will allow you to have anywhere between 4, 6, 8, 12 motor bench. I also had another couple people ask how I can do this without a compressor, and that's not how these work. Uh, you couldn't, it costs you way too much to have a big enough compressor to make this thing flow the volume you need. You don't need high pressure, you need high volume. And a compressor, you can get tons and tons of pressure, but if you try to open it up through a big hole like that, you lose it all fast. So you want something that has lots of volume and minimal pressure. So let me show you some of my spare ones. So this is out of my, well, this is out of my second bench. Uh, I had, I've had several attempts of a bench. The very first one was a shop vac and a plate that tied into it, turned the shop vac on, and then a, well, let's bring this out anyways. Tied to a manometer. This is just a simple water gauge. Very simple and easy to make. You hook it on one end up to it. And when the valve's closed, you obviously have no vacuum, and you or actually have full vacuum. The vacuum motor is pulling as much vacuum as it possibly can. And as you open it up, the vacuum starts to fall. So when you first turn it on, this thing would be clear up here. And as you open it up, a hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, four hundred thousandths, and you could test it that way. Accuracy. A little hard because you're not holding it a steady pressure you're constantly dropping I'm getting complicated here again but anyways that was my first bench um, it, it allowed me to figure things out and allowed me to seize different things but it was really hard and so that's when I found Bruce and I built my first bench but I didn't have enough money to even do what I've done here so I made me a real small bench and I only had three of these in there and I could only flow about 230 CFM. And I had to test at 10 inches instead of 28. And that helped and I got ideas and I got things figured out. And then I finally broke down and built this one. Um, I can't remember right now. I think it's a six motor bench. So there's six of these motors in there. I think I, I, think I did the eight motor bench and I got two plugged off. I don't remember. But anyways, this is how you create the air. And there's the, when you switch this around is whether it's pulling the air through here and creating your, your suction, or it's picking the air up from here and bringing it around and blowing the pressure so that you can test intake and have the air sucking through, or you can test your exhaust and have the air blowing out just like it will from an engine. So, Obviously, it's more than 50 bucks for this thing. And these motors will cost you a little bit, and however many you get. Um, if you can afford it, I would, I would go with at least the eight, six or eight, eight vacuum motor bench. Um, put this back. 
I'm not getting into any real big detail about this because the site I'm going to give you, oh, let me, let me stop right there. This is not a paid sponsor or paid video for Bruce and his site. It's PTS. Um, he's not paying me a dime for this. He doesn't even know I'm making this video at this moment. Anyway, so I'm not getting paid a dime to do this. But he is a lot like me. This isn't his big business. He doesn't make big, huge dollar signs out of all this stuff. This is his side hustle. He likes doing it. And he likes helping people out. Um, so I'll kind of roll this thing around a little bit and show you a little bit of how it's all done. Um, first thing is how it decides how much air is being flowed through. And like I said, this, there's a lot, this is a lot more technical than I'm talking about, to you about. But on their site, you'll understand all this. You'll get it all figured out. But this is considered an orifice bench. And you build these portholes. And this is divided into two sections. The air comes in here, comes up, goes through this hole, through this calibrating plate, and then there's differential pressures centers here and here and with the computer programming it figures all that out and tells you what your CFM is. Now you don't have to buy his fancy electronic computer to do what I'm doing now but I gotta tell you it's nice. Um, you can use this as simple as can be, you just put it in here so that you can see what the vacuum is, so you can keep it at 28 inches or whatever you're going to test at. And then you'll have another gauge like this that's on a slant. And so as the, you open the valve up and it gets more airflow, it'll climb up that. And there's a calibration to that, and then a mathematical equation to that. And you figure that all out, and then you come up with the CFM that you've got. It works, it saves you a lot of money, but that is convenient. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, now we got a little light back here. Focus on it, get back far enough so you can see it. <laughs> so this is the panel that comes out of the back of it, and this is where all your eight, 12, however many more you're gonna put in are in. And you take this off to service it if you have a motor that goes bad or whatever. And the air comes in, as you can see, this big hole. The air comes in here, and it, the air is either drawn in and run through it, or when you change that plate, it now turns it around and the air is pulled out of the you know intake one is pulling air down through here and blowing it out here so you're on your vacuum side that way or you turn it around and the air is coming in instead of coming out going up pushing up out the top and that's simple terms basically how it all works so when you have it on exhaust mode you can test the exhaust side because that's the way the air is coming out of the engine when you have it on intake mode then you can come this way. On my next video, when I get my adapter, and we'll get, we'll use this for our first test, but then we'll get rid of this. We'll take this and bolt it directly onto here, turn the right way, have it on vacuum mode so the air pulls down through it, just like it does on your car. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my flow bench. If you have any questions or want, have something specific that you want me to test, let me know. I'll leave a link down in the show notes to get you to PTS and Bruce's form. I'll throw in a couple pictures of kind of what the form looks like so you know you got onto the right site. His uh, site is pretty generic, but that's okay. This is the home page. 
And then this is where it shows the $50 plans or blueprints. And then, of course, I showed you earlier the form, the uh, forum, where you can talk about all the different stuff if, if you're interested at all in, in trying to build one of these. Um, most people won't. That's pretty uh, specialized thing. And, uh, but there might be one or two of you that are really interested in doing what I did. I'll give you all the information you need to start going doing research on it and decide whether it's what you'd like to try, what you'd like to do. Our next video will be once I get my adapter and we take this thing and turn it right side up on my new adapter so it'll bolt to my float bench and we'll do some more testing. Testing stuff like maybe this or this, or you know these. Maybe we'll put all the ones that have all the little teeny pieces together, lay with them on, see what how it affects to it. Um, put a stock air filter on it. Turn the filter upside down. Um, actually, I don't think I have a stock air filter. I have a dual snorkel, which is close to a stock air filter. Um, and then of course your open element one, I can take that off my CUDA. We can test all that stuff. I think it'll be a fun one just to see how it all works and what changes and whether it makes any change at all. I have no idea and uh, we'll learn together. Until the next video, later.